with Ronald Acuna riding the struggle bus with only two homers and hitting 268. Is there a buy low window open right now? We're covering Acuna and much more on today's action packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, we're your number one source of fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Dominic Martino. You can find me on Twitter at Don Martino FB. Here, as always, with my brother, my co-host, partner in crime, Matthew Arne, and you can find him on Twitter at Matthew underscore Arne. And if you're listening on a platform like Apple or Spotify, the last five-star ratings and reviews, we would truly, truly appreciate appreciate it if you could do that for us and if you're watching on youtube and you haven't already hit that little bell below it subscribes to the channel and gives you notification every time we drop a new episode and lastly but most importantly to matt and i guys join us on the diamond club on the subtext platform the link to our subtext is in our bio uh wherever you're listening or watching and available on all the social media platforms through subtext it's in depth in-depth personalized experience through text messaging alerts right to your phone you get waiver wire updates our uh, waiver wire ranking updates injury alerts and so much more than we could offer in this 30 minute episode and guys uh today's episode is brought to you by prize picks the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports go to prizepicks.com slash locked on mlb and use the code all lowercase locked on mlb for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars and guys uh this great time of year to trade uh really truly is the best time of year to trade right now um buying low and selling high is so much fun uh, but Matt, uh, one of your boys uh, up first, uh, you know, one of the stars of the MLB, uh, let's ride in the struggle bus. What are we doing with him, Matt? Yeah, I mean, Ronald Acuna right now is just unfortunately not living up to the the power aspect that he showed last year, which obviously I don't think is going to be a thing, you know, come like another week or two. Like, it's just one of those things. He hit his first home run in a bit last week, and I think it's about to start picking back up. He batted 320. He had the five runs, the two ribs, the three stolen bases. Like, he looks good overall. Like, Ronald Acuna looks good. He's still ranked 37th in, you know, head-to-head Roto Leagues. Like, he's fantastic even without the home runs. So, batting average is creeping up. The power, I think, is about is, – is around the corner. And once that happens, it's going to explode. Now, by no means are you going to be able to go out there and trade any of the guys we're going to say later in this show. You're going to have to give up a player of value. But normally he is untouchable. So if I can trade up and kind of get like a like a combination of guys because I hit on lower guys in the draft and go up and move up to get Ronald Acuna. Ronald Acuna is worth like anybody at this point because nobody's putting up 40, 60, 40, 50, like batting batting 300 or close to it with 100 and 100, 100 runs, 100 ribbies. Ronald Acuna is so worth the trade up and trading a higher value player that is somewhat performing to go out and acquire the number one pick overall, who probably will finish as the number one fantasy player for the next like decade. So Ronald Acuna is a must acquire right now. Do whatever you can and try and get him now. Matt, you you hit the nail on the head when you were just talking about Acuna is normally untouchable, especially after what he did last year. MVP, uh, you know, first person ever to go 40, 70. Uh, And right now, Acuna, eight RBIs, only two homers, you know, 268 batting average is a little bit low. I think you could strike now. And if you could acquire him, you know, giving up even uh, a a, a high-end second-round talent, uh, you know, throwing a little something extra you acquired off the waiver wire that isn't really, you know, um, going to be doing it in a month from now. Uh, you make those kinds of deals to get the talent, and Acuna is the most talented player in the league. Uh, Matt, of course, hop back in, brother. Question for you. Would yeah, you trade sure. Ellie De La Cruz to go and acquire on the Acuna? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, and I honestly think, Matt, that's like a perfect trade you make in a redraft league right now. Mm-hmm. In a redraft league, that's the perfect thing. I know Ellie's got 19 steals already and eight homers and the batting average looks pretty good. But we know who Acuna is. Acuna's been around seven years, and I know Ellie's the hot new toy. But this is what buying uh, buying low and selling high is all about. So, Matt, honestly, perfect point there. Let's move on. I, I, I you. The the chemistry is here. I know we haven't we I know we haven't been uh you know a lot of episodes together recently, but the chemistry is right there. Perfect. Thank you, my brother. Uh, let's move on to Josh Hader. 
Josh here is, you know, somebody I honestly had as my number one closer coming into the year. And Matt was talking trash. And Matt's like, what are you doing, Dom? He's old. You know, he doesn't have it anymore. I never and said honestly, he didn't have it anymore. Okay. I, 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 I might be paraphrasing him. I might be paraphrasing. Apparently, Sounds the chemistry like is gone. Putting, putting <laughs> words in my mouth. And, and, and Matt, uh, the episode of South Park. And, and it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. It's yeah, gone. So, so, so there we go. But with Josh Hader, you know, the numbers don't look great so far. 15 games, 6-1-4 ERA, 14 innings pitched. I love the 24 strikeouts, but seven walks and a 1-4-3 whip. Now, uh, the panic button's pressed. Uh, you know, people seem to be a little bit worried, but I'm not. Uh, 309 FIP, fielding independent pitching, ERA indicator looks good. Strikeouts look great. Uh, you know, the underlying stuff looks good for Josh Hader. Uh, you know, the Astros aren't playing great themselves. So I think as the Astros turn it around, things are going to look better for Josh Hader. Honestly, you know, uh, it, it's tough coming over to a new team. You know, Matt and I always say, you know, first year new team kind of applies to Hader here. You know, kind of been all over the place the last couple of years anyway with San Diego, uh, you know, going back, you know, from that trade. But uh, I think Josh Hader figures it out. Uh, I think he's still going to be a top, you know, maybe not the best closer in the league, but a top, you know, five to eight closer the rest of the year. If you can go out there and, you know, buy low on him, I, I really think you can go out there and do it while the ERA is at a six and the the whip is at a one four plus. Yeah, I mean, like, you gotta got to look at it like this. Like, if you go and check his baseball savant page, there's still a whole bunch of red. Yeah. There's very, very, very little, um, you know, blue. His, and, and it just, it is what it is this year. Like, like, you know, New new team, new year, like you said it perfectly. And just to reference it too, when he first went from Milwaukee, which wasn't a great year for him in general, he had a 424 ERA on there. He went up even higher. He had 16 outings, 16 innings, essentially, which is 16 outings for the Padres. Essentially, he's the only play pitches about an inning and had a 731 ERA and then followed it up in 2023 with a 128 ERA. Like it takes a little bit of time to adjust. Now, granted, if you combine those two seasons, he's had what? He had, what, uh, 50, 50 innings? Well, that may be a whole season of dutiness, or maybe it just might be, hey, I'm, re- I'm he might turn it around around the corner now. But I think there'll be better times to come with uh, Josh Hader as we get to the second half of the season. You don't have to pay the premium right now, and you should be able to go and move uh, a closer that's truly performing and or that is a little bit on the lower tier and be like, okay, cool, give me Josh Hader slide him in come second half he's thrown up like 40 saves in the second half and you're winning the category wholeheartedly so josh Hader is something you need to acquire let's talk about somebody that's a little bit more like disappointing in my opinion who i do think there's better days to come but obviously we had to you know essentially adjust our expectations for this year and that's jackson churio jackson churio right now um is you know has a wonderful stat line of you know 219 batting average, six stolen bases, 13 uh, ribs, four, four home runs, 14 runs. But last week he picked it up a little bit, was able to bat about 308, had two stolen bases, but didn't have anything else besides four runs. Cheerio is just not performing to the high expectations we had of him where, you know, we thought that he was going to be a power speed combo. And you know what? I'm still, I still don't think that that's out of the question. Uh, Cheerio did it for in, in the minors for years. And I don't think that, you know, 105 at bats is, you know, his story is written. It's not going to happen. Like, I just think there's no world where that doesn't, where he doesn't live up to his hype. So essentially I go out and acquire him. Now I'm seeing in the comments presently today, actually. Um, so Monday for us, should I drop Cheerio for X? Should I drop Cheerio for Y? Like people are looking to drop him. So you might be able to go out there and actually acquire him on the cheap. Now they may be on the, uh, like these players might be more on like the the newer to it or the impatient side of things that kind of hedge really quickly quickly and react too soon and everybody does this but you got to capitalize on those people but also too you you probably still could get him for significantly cheaper than you were than you could going into the season so Jackson and Cheerio is somebody you need to go out and acquire now and guys uh you know you're gonna need to stick around and fi- find out if I'm breaking out the hater aid or if i'm gonna agree and see with matt on the young jackson churio uh because we got a couple of quick ad breaks for you guys prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in north america 
They are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more or less than two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Sparring my skills on prize picks this season adds an extra layer of excitement to daily fantasy sports. With just a few taps, you could transform $10 into $1,000 easily. Prize picks is incredibly user friendly. You can make your selections and submit your entries in less than 60 seconds. As the host of Locked On Fantasy Baseball, here are some rock solid picks for you. Offer of Ryan Mountcastle to have higher than 0.5 total bases in his next start, which should be easy. Offer Shoyo Yotani to have higher than 0.5 home runs in his next game. Well, I mean, he did two yesterday, so that's a dub. And offer CJ and offer CJ Abrams to have higher than 0.5 stolen bases in this game. Done. Download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB for first deposit match up to hundred dollars. Again, download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB for first deposit match up to hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with prize picks. I've been told I have a competitive side, and you know what? It's true. Dom would agree. I know it wholeheartedly, and that's why I also play fantasy baseball. And, you know, we all do, right? And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you in big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on iconic properties, just like in classic Monopoly, but now I can go in their vaults and rob them and steal their money for myself. And there's a leaderboard to show off how big of a Monopoly tycoon I am compared to my friends. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. I could also team up with my friends since I'm feeling pity on those peasants and, you know, help them join in tournaments and get them to earn rewards to somehow catch up to me in some way, shape, or form. So get in the game and join your friends Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play Store. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have you had to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day, bringing you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you a can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or free on the Amazon Fire TV channel app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Also, guys, we're introducing the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast Diamond Club on Subtext, your ultimate fantasy baseball companion. This season, rely on our dynamic content, get real time alerts right to your phone, including waiver wire rankings, instant call up notifications, injury reactions, and a whole lot more. Stay ahead of your fantasy leagues by joining the Diamond Club on Subtext, where your path to victory begins. Subscribe now and elevate that fantasy baseball experience to new levels and just for new new uh, new members here, you get a free two weeks upon joining. So hop on in there, try it out, and watch how you have the leg up on everybody with all the prospect calls and all the other reactions and rankings that we're going to provide you going from this point on. So join now. The link is in the description below. So Dom, Matt, my brother, I, I need to give you. I need to give you a shout out real quick on that that Monopoly Go ad. That was the most beautifully red ad I've I've, I've ever seen. To be honest, well, which I was spot on. Well, thank you. They do call me a savant after I re- read it about fifty times. Um, the first yeah, no, of yeah, it was times. that was perfect, perfect. Thank Anyone you. who didn't get to hear that needs to go go check it out because that was that was very very well done. But I know everyone's here for the fantasy baseball, so let's get back to it. Uh, Jackson Churio, right? Um, with Jackson Churio, um, I'm in agreement with Matt. I think there's this is a very very good um buy low window at the moment on the young Jackson Churio. But I will say this: he's 20 years old, and um, you know, even though he did sign that big contract, I don't think the Brewers sent him down. But they've moved him down in the lineup. You know, he went from hitting leadoff; he's down to hitting eighth and ninth recently. Uh, so you know, the Jackson Trio owners are panicking. You know, as Matt said, we've seen the comments. Uh, I, I don't think the power or speed is gone. It's just that 20 years old, you know, transitioning to MLB is not as easy as a uh, Juan Soto or Acuna or Tatis. Uh, you know, made it look. And I always say we were spoiled. We were spoiled those years. You know, this year's a big wake up call with Jackson Holiday and a lot of these other young guys, you know, struggling so far, um, you know, in the the bigs. So with Jackson Churio, I think we can buy very, very low. Even in Dynasty Leagues, there might be a window right now where you can go out and you can get him, you know, for, you know, um, 75 cents on the dollar. Uh, I'm making those deals. I'm betting on the talent uh, at 20 years old. I think Jackson Churio has time to adjust uh, to major league pitching and still, you know, winds up being a very, very good player um, in, in his career career uh let's move on to somebody that i love to talk about and there's actually some good news on it's blake snell uh blake snell always does this you know if 
if you if you think that Blake Snell is done or he's washed, then you just don't know who Blake Snell is. This is his normal song and dance. He gets off to a tough start. Yeah, uh, you know, he was behind everybody else already, you know, coming in late uh with that deal, you know, with the Giants. But uh Blake Snell will throw a three inning live batting practice session on Tuesday. You know, as you guys are listening to this, you know, he was cleared after his bullpen session went well on Saturday. Uh I, I think this all looks good. I think it's all good news. You know, maybe we got two weeks left before, you know, we uh, Blake Snell's really ramping back up and almost ready to return. But here is the buy low window. Maybe comes out has one, two more shaky starts. So maybe got a little bit more time, but I'm not risking it. What if he comes back out and he looks great? Six innings, 10 strikeouts, no earned runs. Some classic Blake Snell, you know, going into the second half, ramping up. Blake Snell will be good at some point this this season. Right now, I think is a very, very good buy low window. I think you can get him for super, super cheap at the moment, especially if he's on uh, somebody's team that has a bunch of guys on the IL at the moment. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree all, like, wholeheartedly. Like Blake Snell just needs to go out and be acquired right now. Um, it'd be silly not to try and throw your hat in the ring and try and acquire him. But, you know. It, it just it, it's a matter of do you have the IL availability because you know yeah. everybody and their mother and their their mother's mother is hurt right now so yes. you know it's pretty rough out there in the um, IL landscape so you know if you got the room if you're fortunate enough try and make that trade and you know see if you can take advantage of that team but let's move on here let's talk Tanner Bybee and Bybee has just been so up and down and unpredictable as of late and he was a guy I had projected to win the Cy Young this year and honestly. I'm going out there and I'm trying to acquire him and not just because I just believe in him, but there's some underlining things that are kind of telling me, Hey, he's okay. Even though you go to his baseball savant and everything's kind of like a, like a fade faded color, both blue and red. So it's not like you're feeling too confident, but he's not doing too bad either. But you know, ultimately you got to look at a few things, right? With when it comes to Bybee and Bybee has done a couple of good things. His exit velocity is actually a little bit slower then uh, a little bit lower than last year. His max EV so far is lower than last year from 115 to 109. So he's not giving up like hard hits. Even his hard hit percentage is down a whole percent. Well, down a bit, 0.2%. And you go from there. And then he also is striking out somebody, striking out players an extra percent of the time. His four seamer is, is about the same. His slider has gone up about two miles per hour. His changeup is the same, and his curveball has even gone up a mile per hour. So he's thrown on a little bit more gas on the certain pitches, and he's look, looking good in, in those regards. He's just ha- getting unlucky. And I think it's all going to come come home soon, and he's going to look a lot better. Now, the beauty of it is you're not going to have to give up a premium to go out and get Tanner Bybee. So my recommendation is try and sneak out one of these pitchers that we're talking about later in the show and kind of get him in there quick, see if you can go out and get him real nice and cheap yeah man i'm right there with you with bybee you know and, and right now like you said everyone's hurt uh especially starting pitcher i think has had it the worst this year i hope we kind of see you know it get better you know whether it's this year next year i hope they figure this out it's it's just getting really bad but tanny might be somebody that we know that has the talent he showed it off last year i don't know if he's gonna ever be as good as he was last year with the sub three era and you know the whip 117 i could buy into that uh, but I think he's a mid three ZRA guy. I think he gets, I think he writes the ship. Uh, I think he's around that K per nine, you know, where he is right now, a little bit over even. And I think the whip, you know, it gets back down to that respectively. Even if it's a one, two, oh, the rest of the way with the three, five ERA, you're winning. You're winning in today's day and age with the way that pitching is. So Tanner Bybee is definitely somebody that I am buying on. Uh, but before we move into people that we are selling high, we're trying to capitalize. We're trying to make that bang for our buck. We do have one more end. And guys, this Mother's Day, get something thoughtful for mom on DoorDash. Surprise her from wherever you are with fresh bouquets, the latest tech, gift cards, self-care treats, and more to make her day that much better. Use the code LOCKEDONMLB to get 50% off your next order. Up to $15 when you spend $15 or more on flowers, convenience, grocery, or retail when you order now on DoorDash. Pair flowers with the gift card so she can celebrate any way she wants. Is she a bookworm? Try a bookstore gift card. Does she love a latte? Get her a gift card to her favorite coffee shop. You can't go wrong. 
Plus, get the convenience of shopping on your phone so you don't have to be the one scrambling, driving around to whatever store it is that's open that you think will have something that your mom happens to like. Trust me, I've been there. Sorry, mom. It was a long time ago. Order now and get everything you need for Mother's Day on DoorDash. Use the code Locked on MLB to get 50% off your next order when you spend $15 or more on your next flower, convenience, grocery, or retail order now on DoorDash. Once again, that's locked on MLB. Order using DoorDash today. Terms do apply. Woo! But all right, Matt, uh, that's a lot for me, brother. Why don't you hop on in here, and uh, why don't we talk about uh, guys that we are selling high on? Yes, and this, this, is when I, this one's great. It's uh, I hope I don't mess up his name, but Ron- Ronel Blanco. You got it. Okay. Uh, I like Blanco. I actually picked him up almost anywhere, everywhere, if uh, if I'm being honest here, because honestly, he was killing it, throwing the no-no, coming close to the no-no the second time. Just been actually like really, really efficient up until even his last start, which is only a 4.15 ERA and that 4.5 ERA, but still 6K, six innings against Seattle. Like I'm not mad at it. He's actually been really good. And this is a perfect time to sell high on him. Um, you know, I understand he's available in 12, 12% of leagues and we're seeing him being dropped. But I mean, if you're dropping this dude for one start, you're, you're making a mistake here. Um, one, just because you're not capitalizing on his value that he's had a tr- proven track record this season where others have not on better names. And it's the whole point to go out and try and acquire these guys. Like I'd totally throw an offer for Blanco to go get Blake Snell right now. Like somebody is probably really, Perfect. really upset. Um, that they, you know, they drafted Blake Snell a tad bit higher than they would have liked to try and capitalize on trying to get that ace, especially if they miss somebody on a top end. Blanco is performing good enough to go out and get him, even Tanner Bybee. Like, I'm totally doing that, or I'm trying to go out there and even try and get Churio. Like, especially if the owner has Churio and, um, is, is like pretty loaded on bats and does not have the depth at arms, you could totally go and get that deal done. I mean, Churio was going after pick 100, but not too far after. So they're not like super hold hearted. He's not like the centerpiece of his team or her team. So Blanco, you can go out there and probably float it in and get get uh, Churio and something, honestly. So float those trades around. If you're considering dropping him because of one start, which again, don't agree with, should not be dropped. He should be traded right now, no matter what. But ultimately, Blanco needs to be sold as high as possible if you don't plan on keeping him. Yeah, Matt, great take there on uh, Ron, El- Ron El Blanco. I-, I always like to reiterate this when we do these kinds of episodes because, you know, you never know when you have a first-time listener or somebody who, you know, hasn't listened in a while. Uh, when we're talking about guys that were selling high, and it's not that we don't think they're good or we're not, don't we think they're not going to be good the rest of the way. It's just about capitalizing on how high their value is at the moment. And that hype for Ryan Blanco, as Matt mentioned, still is, you know, not far long ago where he threw the no hitter and, you know, had the second starter where it was almost no hitter. His a season long numbers, three wins through six starts, 209 ERA, 096 whip, 38 innings, 36 strikeouts. But if you look at his last three starts, you know, the control hasn't been as good. The whip's kind of elevated. Uh, uh, Renel Blanco is another guy. If he pitches to a 3 5, 3 6 ERA around a K per nine with a, you know, a 1 2 5 whip the rest of the way, yes, he's a great pitcher, but it's not the no hitter, 2 uh, ERA, sub 1 whip guy that we are looking at right now. So I think if you can go out, as Matt said, you get the Blake Snell, you get the Jackson Churio, you get the guys that we know. Uh, who they are and what they're capable of uh you're perfect on that uh let's keep things pushing and let's go to the next guy uh, another old guy that i'm not buying the old guy breakout jerk some profile Jerickson profile if you've been around a long time this guy was a super super hyped up prospect you know as he was young coming up through the system uh off to a great start this year but do i think you know the the 31 year old uh, you know has figured it out and is finally going to live up to the hype uh absolutely not uh he uh, Jerks and Profar so far hitting 344 with 18 walks to 21 strikeouts, five homers, 23 RBIs, two steals, uh, 20 runs. Looks really, really good through his first 37 games. Uh, I don't think he keeps it up. I think there's a reason he's a 242 career hitter uh, with, you know, not a crazy amount of pop or speed uh, I, I just think he's mediocre and i think if there's you know you get some old heads in there that believe the hype that pro far you know uh you know used to have you sell you sell I, i'm not buying it i think you get rid of him for what you can 
Yeah, I don't. I think he's more of like a a, a piece of a trade that kind of gets a deal done, right? So like he's like if you're looking at trying to get it, uh, oh, okay. trying to get a, a deal done with a player that's you know short on one of his positional eligibilities, and you're trying to get a bigger piece, you throw him and the guy you really want to trade in, and it should get the job done. He's hot right now, and obviously he's going to teeter off, but you fill multiple needs. So try and fi- find a trade partner that is struggling and with his boatload of a positional eligibility and it should get the job done and get the, and help push that offer over, over the finish line. But let's move on. Let's talk Brent Rooker. Um, Rooker is somebody that honestly could repeat last year. Um, what he did, but last year wasn't great outside of power. He hit 31 home runs. He didn't break 70 runs or 70 ribs and had a 246 batting average. That's totally repeatable for Rooker. He has power. But do you really, really want him on your team for a full season? Capitalize now while he's showing off the power and hit three home runs this last week with seven ribs and six runs, batting 438. Obviously, this isn't going to be a regular for him. Capitalize on his high performance now and get to somebody that's struggling with power and say, okay, dude, like I see you're struggling with home runs. I see you're struggling with trying to, you know, get some a push right now. You're having guys like Julio on your team. Trade him. I don't know how much you're really going to get for him either, but again, he's in the same boat as Profar. He's going to be a piece that's going to help get you over that finish line to not have to give up too many valuable players. You're giving up a player that's just going to fit that team's needs and then be able to get you to walk away with the player you need. Matt, great, great take on Rooker. I'm, I'm in agreement. Uh, with, with Brett Rooker, it's once again, he's the perfect example of selling high. You strike while the iron's hot, had the big weekend, uh, you know, what is it, seven RBIs, three home runs, like Matt said, uh, hitting fourth in that Oakland lineup that eventually is not, they're not that good. They're just not a good team. The runs and RBIs aren't going to be there. Uh, but Matt, great breakdown. You didn't, <laughs> no meat on the bone left on that one. Uh, let's move on to uh, potentially our last guy here. Uh, maybe we'll sneak one more on. Uh, uh, we'll see how it goes. But let's talk about Jake Cronenworth. Uh, Jake Cronenworth, another guy I just feel like we know who he is at this point in his career. You know, it's the same thing with Jerks and Profar. Uh, I'm not buying a huge breakout from him here. Uh, not really known for power or speed. Uh, you know, just uh, that San Diego lineup is decent. Uh, might have a little bit of batting average here and there. But, you know, just not somebody that, you know, I'm loving in on. Matt, I, I loved your really uh, great take on, you know, a, a adding in a guy like, Pro far Rooker Cronenworth, you know, Cronenworth has first and second eligibility. Second base has been a very, very hard position to fill. Uh, uh strike while the iron's hot. We kind of seen Cronenworth over you know the last couple of years, you know, really fall off a cliff with a 239 batting average in 2022, 229 batting average in 2023. Uh, just doesn't really do too much that gets me excited. So, you know, Cronenworth, I'm adding with Renel Blanco. Uh, to go and get, you know, Snell and a hater or, you know, making moves like that, getting guys that are established that I know what they can do and just capitalizing on guys that capitalize on guys that might be hot at the moment. That's what the name of the game is. And that's why I love doing these episodes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like Cronenworth is, you know, you could probably target a team that has lost Casas or has dealt with injuries at other positions or even just their UT guy. That's just not been performing. Now, you know, the the fact that he has positional eligibility makes him a smidge bit more valuable than guys that are riding the hot hand because now he could fit more than one, fill more than one hole, even on an off day. So he does pose a little bit more than some. So Cronenworth definitely needs to be traded now. Again, he's like Dom was saying, and like I've been saying for those last couple guys, he's a, a little piece in the whole big trade, but enough to not get you to give up like that extra guy. Honestly, it just it's just the name of the game. But that being said, uh, you know, normally I'd say Dom get us out of here, but since I've been closing it out so often by on the dolo, I'm doing it. Um, you know, thank you. Please like, subscribe, comment, rate, review. And we're actually gonna have a special guest on our next episode, Josh Lloyd from Locked On Fantasy Basketball. He's gonna Super come talk excited. some Wario meter, and it's gonna be a good time. He said he's been following some fantasy baseball and he wants to hang out with us. So you know, come and check us out tomorrow. It's going to be a good episode. But with that being said, guys, have a great night. See ya. Okay.